Amen. That didn't go right. I said, did you have a great time? Amen. See, when they said when Thanksgiving becomes an integral part of your life, your attitude towards life is going to change. That means regardless if I had turkey or not, I'm still going to give God thanks and praise. Whether I would family or not, I'm still going to give God thanks and praise because it's because of his faithfulness. It is because of his goodness this morning. Amen. I want to say, God, thank you this morning. Amen. How many can say thank you this morning? Amen. I may not have the house. I may not have millions of dollars this morning. Everything might not be all right. Amen. Some I's has not been dotted. Some T's has not been crossed this morning. But I still want to give God thanks and praise because I know if I praise him I know if I trust him he's going to see me through this morning I'm going to say thank you Jesus maybe forgive me this morning maybe I had too much to eat so I have a lot of energy but I, I want you to know it's not that it's just I'm so I'm so grateful for God you know I could stay in a position of whining and moping and being down and stuff but how many know as we sang that song this morning, God fights over battle. I say he fights over battle. And you know what I've found out? That God qualified the unqualified. Amen. Did you hear what I said this morning? You could, uh, that was a place to just jump up and praise God this morning. God qualified the unqualified this morning. And so many times that the enemy tend to tell you in your face that you're unqualified. But I'm grateful this morning. That God do not call the qualify, but he called the unqualify and he qualify them. <laughs> yes, I, I, are you hear what I'm saying this morning? God qualifies us, amen, for what he has us to do. Amen. Just high five in Abel and says, amen, praise look good on you this morning. Amen, praise look good on you this morning. If the team can help me and put up the book of Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. And as we do that, we want to thank God for every person this morning, all the families, amen, every work of the church, amen, we want to say, again, we want to say thank you, amen, without you, we are unable to do what we are doing. We're glad to have Pastor Rosa in the house, amen. amen. Pastor Rosa, God bless you. This is how we fight our battles, amen, and you're in the house of the Lord, it's better to be in the house of the Lord than in the hospital, so we are grateful for you this morning. And for you to be here, we know that, amen, God is fighting your battle. So you thank you for being here this morning. And we are grateful this morning for all those who went to abroad, travel. We thank you for being, a, amen, rich and back. Say thank God and thank God for you this morning. My brother is in the house all the way from Trinidad. Amen. Um, evangelist, prophet, Adish Maraj. And uh, we thank God for him that he, this is, has been his um, customary thing to come and spend um, Thanksgiving with his family, so we're grateful for him this morning. Um, I just want to, before I forgot and forget, um, please pray for my brother-in-law, Brother Gat. He spent, you know, many times with us. You know, he was up here. Um, he's running for election, and uh, tomorrow is the um, local election in Trinidad. And tomorrow he asked that we continue to pray for him. He said he feels so secure in his heart that he knows that God has already given him a winning ticket. <laughs> Um, that's faith. Amen. That's faith. So just continue to pray for them that everything goes smooth. You know, they were already making, um, saying things about him in a negative way. Um, the opponent or the opposing team, but you know what, how we fight, we battle is to trust God and to give God praise this morning. So please remember him. Amen. Tomorrow is, um, they're going to, um, vote for the local elections. So we pray even for everything to be stabilized in Trinidad. Amen. That it will be something that is fear. Amen. And so we are grateful this morning. Um, God is good this morning. You know, I've, um, you know, even though I'm, I'm for many years, I'm serving God. Some things, you know, you just got to, you know, you got to just go over and remember what God has taught you in the past. Sometimes the past can be a menace, but sometimes your past can be a great teacher. And um, depending on the attitude that you focus on, because you can re reflect on the past and become all negative. Or you can reflect on the past and what you have been through and learn some stuff from it. So your, your past also become a great teacher. And so this morning, we are grateful this morning that we can, you know, sometimes when we're going through a battle or going through a storm or going through a situation, we got to remember that if God has brought us out in the past by a different situation, he's able to bring you through in the present. Well, God is same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And somebody say amen. amen. 
We're going to go to jo um, Jonah, and so followed me this morning. I know they said there's a storm coming, and um, some people already stayed home. All right. But we are grateful this morning that you are here this morning. Storm or snowstorm that we're in the presence of God. God will see us through. Why don't you just read from verse 1 to verse 3 this morning, and let's read as you have it on the screen. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amity. Get up. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their wickedness has confronted me. Verse 3. However, Jonah got up to flee to Tashus from the Lord's presence. And he went down to Joppa and found the ship going to Tashus and he paid the fear and went down into it to go with them to Tashus from the presence of the Lord this morning. We want to thank God for the reading of his word this morning, which is already blessed. And we are grateful that God has given us his word this morning. And we, as we study, to show ourselves approved, a workman who will not be ashamed, but rightly divided the word of truth. How many know God want to speak to us this morning? And I want to share from this passage of scripture, just a thought this morning. When a person runs from God. When a person runs from God. How how many understand this one? We all have troubles and we all face circumstances in life. And sometimes, amen, we are overwhelmed and burdened by situations that we encounter each and every day. We cannot help but understand that the book of Job tells us in Job chapter 14 verse 1 that a man that is born of a woman, his days are few and full of trouble. So as long as we are alive and we are living, we will experience trouble. Whether you are believer in God or whatever, whether you are saint this morning, we all will experience trouble. But the thing is that trouble will come to all of us, but what do we do in the midst of the chaos? What do we do in the midst of the problem that we encounter? What do we do when we face bad? Bad news this morning. You see, the problem, amen, is not really the problem. The problem is the attitude in which we deal with the problem. Because no matter who we are, we all encounter problem. But when the problem do occur, what do we do in the midst of the problem? What do we say in the midst of the problem? Do we still believe that God is able to do the impossible in the midst of the problem? Or do we rely on what the problem is speaking to us about? The problem I say there is no hope. The problem I say is, amen, you will never be healed. The problem I say is that that thing will never be fixed this morning. But how many know that with God, all things are possible? So the attitude in which we have, amen, is important when we are faced with, with the trials and the testings of life. One man, he was so burdened down with problems. He was a businessman. All different types of problems he would encounter. In fact, this probably is a season for so much problem. And so he just wanted to get, get away and just wanted to run away. Have you ever felt like that when the problems are so much that you just want to get away? Is anybody here, amen, can be a witness? Sometimes you just want to run this morning. Sometimes you just want to leave everything and go. Is anybody here with me? Go help me preach this morning. So this businessman, he was so overwhelmed with problems that he decided, I'm going to take, amen, I'm going to take a vacation. So he went to the, uh, to the travel agency that he normally used for his business. And he says, amen, to the travel agent, I want you to book a ticket for me as far as possible. They said, where do you want to go? I, he said, I don't care. Just find a place for me to go. I just want to go. But sir, we need to know. He said, you use your own discretion. If it's, it's, if it's a Japan, then send me Japan. But sir, we need to know for sure. How long? He said, doesn't matter. Just book a ticket. So the travel agent guy says, but what do, what do you want to get away from? What are you running from? He said, I'm overwhelmed with so much situation that I just want to get away from myself. But sir, and he keep, he keep you know, Stopping the guy, the travel agent, from saying anything. And, and finally, when he come to arrest, the travel agent says, Sir, whether you go to Japan or go across the globe, you cannot run from yourself because when you get there, you will meet you there. <laughs> this morning, we all are running from something. Or we are running to something. 
We got just got to find out, amen, what we are running from. How many of you remember, amen, that familiar um, TV show, amen, The Fugitive? Every week, David Jensen, amen, played the part of a medical doctor was falsely convicted of killing his wife. He was sentenced to prison, but somehow he escaped. And his main goal in life was to find that one armed man whom he had seen leaving the scene of the murder. Sometime during the episodes, he would almost be caught by the police. Yet somehow he always escaped and was able to continue his life on the run. And while he was running away from the law, he was always worried that somehow he would be identified. I'm here to tell you this morning, lots of people spend their whole life running from God. In the same way a fugitive runs from the law. They are convinced that God is out to get them. And there are many people, amen, feel that God, they're running from God because he's out to get them. In fact, they don't want to face God. They don't want to talk to God. They don't even want to take the time to think about God. That's why they find themselves running from God. Others know God. But they run away from his, the plans that he has for their life. Now I want you to underscore this, this one. There are others who are running away. They know God. But they are running away from his plans. That he has for their life. They have known God in their life. And, and even worship God. Even spend time in his presence. But sometimes they find themselves. Running from God's will for their life because it is his will and not their own. Many people run from God, don't want to talk to God because they want to do their own thing rather than be obedient to what God wants for their life. But I'm here to declare this morning that God's will is the best thing that could happen to your life. Are you hearing me, somebody? Being in the will of God is the, is the most secure place to be. Because at the end of the day, amen, God wants you to be in his will so that you can fulfill the very mandate that is, he has placed upon your life. And this was the case in the life of Jonah. Perhaps Jonah is the most striking biblical example. Of a man trying to run away from God. And there are many people in this time that we live in. Who are children of the most high God. Is running away from him. Most of us are at least somewhat familiar. With Jonah's story. But the question that must be asked. As we examine Jonah's attempt. At running from God. An attempt that we have made to follow in his footstep is this. Can running from God really be justified? Can running from God really be justified? Or to put it in a different way, why would a person run from God? If that was your question this morning, what would be your response to that question? Why would a person run from God? So from these verses, Jonah, let us learn some answers about running from God. First of all, we come to understand that when we read verse 1 to verse 2, when a person runs from God, he has heard from God. So that person who decided to run from God. Is a person who has heard from God. When we read and, and, and analyze this passage of scripture. You would see. When did Jonah take off running from God? It wasn't before. 
if you would read, you would see Jonah started running from God. It was when he heard the voice of God speaking to him. So in actuality, Jonah ran from God after he heard what God had said. Verse 1 clearly tells us that this was the word of the Lord. Throughout the Bible, you will find that God's voice is not easily mistaken. How many know when God speaks this morning, or one, when God gives you a word, how many know that word guarantee that he will never leave you? That word guarantee you that it will sustain you. The same word that guarantee his presence is the same word is able to sustain you. And if God has spoken to your life this morning, how many know when he speak a word, he's giving you the assurance that his presence is going to be with you regardless how difficult the situations may be. When God spoke to the, when Jesus spoke to the disciples and tell them to go to the boat, go into the boat and go to the other side, he spoke a word. That word, do you know or do you think that God was aware that it would be a storm in the middle of their journey? If we believe that God is omniscient and knows all things, then God is fully aware that there would be a storm in the midst of their journey. But he spoke a word this morning. And so when God speaks this morning, his words guarantee you that his presence is going to be with you. So when you're going through your storms of life this morning and you hear God's word, know there's a guarantee of his presence is going to be with you this morning. That's why he says in the time of trouble, amen, I am ever present with you. His word declares I will never forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many grateful that God has spoken and he has guaranteed his presence. So his presence was guaranteed. I mean, oh, Jonah was a man of God. Jonah was assigned by God to go to Nineveh to preach to the Ninevites. There, was all, there were other prophets and other pastors and, and leaders and ministers. But how I many know oh, God's assignment for Jonah hasn't changed? God assignment, no matter what you do, how I many know oh, God doesn't change his assignment upon your life? You may run from God, but it doesn't change your assignment from God. God could have chosen any other prophet to go to Nineveh and to preach to Nineveh. Even though that Jonah we read, run from God, how I many the assignment was still on Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach the word? So when people run from God, they're not only running from the assignment of God, but they're trying to run away from the presence of God. David says you could go to the deepest part of the ocean, God is there. It's like the guy who went to the travel agency, book a ticket for me to any part of the world because I want to get away from myself. But if understand that wherever he go he will be there that wherever you and I go how I many of God presence is going to be there Jonah was running from the presence of God but God's voice is not easily mistaken after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden of Eden they could hear God's voice call him out to them and says where are you? You could be running from God and you could still hear God's voice. You can mess up and still hear God speaking to you. I remember one time I was in the, I was in the dance club. I was saved, but I, I had a sort of a, a, a I want to drift away. And it's in the dance club while I was dancing to the song, playing with the queen of hearts. God spoke to me and said, what are you doing here? I want you to know this morning that every drifter can still hear from God. Every person who's running from God is still able to hear the voice of God. When you're a child of God this morning, 
Amen. You come to know, amen, your father's voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and I know their voice also. Amen. So when God speaks, you know his voice is speaking. Even though that you're running from God, you can still, amen, hear his voice. In Exodus uh, chapter 19, Moses clearly heard God calling him to the top of the mountain. In Judges chapter 2, the Israelites heard God's voice rebuking them for their disobedience and they wept aloud. In Isaiah chapter 6, God revealed himself to Isaiah. It was a day that Isaiah would never forget. Because when God speaks to you, how many know it brings about change? When God speaks to you, there's something that happens because you see when God's word is transformative. Because I want you to know, amen, when God spoke the word, worlds will form and frame by his spoken word this morning. When God speaks, how I many of there's authority in his voice this morning? That's why as believers this morning, when we are going through a crisis, it's important, amen, to what comes out of your mouth. Because the Bible tells us, amen, lies in the power of the tongue is the power of death and the power of life this morning. So when you're going through your situation, it's time to speak and you must speak what the word of God says in your situation. Don't speak death, speak life this morning. Morning. Your God is a linguistic God, and when He speaks, lives are transformed, worlds are formed and framed by His spoken word. Because it is possible that when you speak negative, when you're going to a situation, amen, you snare your own life. And we, th we think it's the devil. The devil is doing me that. It's not the devil. As you have opened your mouth and you have cursed your crisis. That's why the Bible tells us a blessed man is one, amen, who take not counsel from the ungodly. Nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The Bible says, upon that law, he meditates upon it day and night. And he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of a living water. Amen. That he, everything that he does will prosper this morning. His leaves shall remain green this morning. I want you to know this morning, when you're a child of God this morning, you don't hear to the voice of the world. You don't hear the philosophies of the world. You hear what God says this morning. And what God says, that is is what you speak and declare this morning because if you speak negative you're going to snare your life yeah. many of God's people are snaring their life because why they have chosen to spoke to speak against what God says and anytime you're speaking against what God says you're gonna snare your life it's like a trap that is set for birds how many more birds were created to fly But the hunters of bird will set traps and the traps will trap the bird so that it will not fly. And so when you snare your life by the words that comes out of your mouth, you will not get to the destination that God has declared for you. Because why you are trapped by you ensnare yourself with the words that proceed out of your mouth. That's why when you get angry, that's why when they get upset, that's why when they don't know what is going on, it's better to zip it than open your mouth and speak. That's why when you're going through a situation and you don't understand, you better zip your mouth than open it and speak. Because many times when you open our mouth and speak and we speak out of time, and we don't speak what the word of God says, we ensnare our life. And you're trapped. There are many people still entrapped by what was said that proceed out of their own mouth. Are you hearing me, somebody? So it is important to understand this this morning. We also see in the Gospels account we find the reactions of the word of the word of the god man christ jesus to be no less potent because how many know the words that jesus spoke was all powerful as well no one ever spoke the way that this man does because when he spoke he spoke as one that has authority and dominion power 
And that to tell you this morning that if we are his this morning, then when you speak, you speak with authority and with power this morning. Are you hearing me, church? Amen. That when you speak this morning, it can be life-changing. Or it can be detrimental this morning. It is critical that you understand that what comes out of your mouth. That's why even when we are serving God, we ought not to speak down any brother or sister. We can even speak down the church that we are, that we are fellowshipping. We cannot speak down the leadership. Amen. This morning, open in your mouth and say things that is negative this morning. Because I want you, you will snare your own life. Because God has created you and I. And we are his sons and daughters this morning. So when you speak down against your brother, you're speaking down about what God has created this morning. Hallelujah, somebody. So no one ever spoke like this man. When Jonah heard the word of the Lord, he ran as fast as his legs would take him. This is, this is the kind of response we would expect from a lost person. But Jonah was a prophet of God. We could expect that from godly people when God speak. But you will assume and think that when God speak to servants and for leaders, amen, that it would adhere to God. Let me clarify something to you. God doesn't change his mind to what he has spoken to you about. When God called me to, to start this ministry, it is his perfect plan. If I fall up, his plan doesn't change. Hello, somebody. The work of the Lord is going to continue. God doesn't change his mind about where he placed you or position you. He doesn't change his mind about you because I want you when he created you and designed you originally. How I many you had a purpose for your life? Your purpose doesn't change. It doesn't matter what people say or how many prophetic words come over your life. It's what God has designed you to do. Amen. That's why when we are placed upon the face of the earth. This morning, we are about our father's business and that is to fulfill the purpose and the mandate that he has placed upon our life. And so here it is that Jonah heard from God as a prophet and he is running faster than his feet can take him. Most lost people I know are truly running from God has definitely heard from God. They have come close enough to the Holy Spirit conviction to know that uncomfortable feeling or realizing that your own sin and lost condition. Because when the gospel is being preached, how many know the Holy Spirit is the one that convict hearts and will make them uncomfortable? Sometimes they can't sleep. Sometimes the Holy Spirit works even, even in the midnight hour. And he's working and that's why they're uncomfortable. Because why? The Holy Spirit is bringing conviction to their soul. And when the Holy Spirit convicts them, sometimes they try to run away from that conviction. How many know people like that? You know God is working. You know God is speaking. But they want to have their own way rather than humble and submit to God. I was reading a book and it talks about some little boys. The neighbor next door to them had one of those blow up um, little pool where you could blow it up and fill it with water and swim. So because the house of the neighbor was closed, they thought that the neighbors were not home. So the little boy jumped the fence. They got the tube and they blow it up. And they use a hose and put on the water and they fill up the, the tube, the pool. And they started bathing in the pool and having fun. So then the neighbor heard them from inside. And soon as he opened the door, every little young man that was in that pool, you don't know where they're getting any to jump the fence, run through the fence, but they ran. They all open, amen, just start running for their life. It seems like 
they felt that the owner or the neighbor opened the door to get to them. Most lost people are running from God because they think that God opened the door on them and caught them doing something wrong. They are running. But like the, the, the boys are, that I shared, they really don't know why they are running. There are people that are running, don't really know why they are running. As I said in the opening statement, you are here today, there are people who are running to something and there are people who are running away from something. Which is it that you may find yourself at some predicament. Are you running to something or you run away from something? I have some friends in that very sad position. They want nothing to do with, with the Bible. They want nothing to do with church or anything that would remind them of God. And I believe there are so, we all have some type of people in our life like that. They don't mind being your friend, but the Bible that you read, the church that you go to, the God that you serve, they don't want no part of that. Is that true? Am I preaching right this morning? You are people that you know don't want those things. They don't mind being friends with you, but keep that to yourself. They are men who are running from God. Now, running from God might be understandable in lost people. But what do we do about men like Jonah? Men who have professed God as God and Lord of their life. Maybe perhaps to this morning in discussion, perhaps he's a, a unique case, one in a million. Surely most believers never run from God. Maybe surely you and I never run from God. Well, surely maybe the church never run from God. Or perhaps if we are really honest with each other this morning, we can admit and should admit that there are times when all of us had run from God. Maybe are you running now? But there are people that are running from God. Because when God the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, we should not be doing what we, that we should do. We do it anyway. Is that not running from God? When the Holy Spirit brings conviction in your life and tell you don't do that and you're still doing it, are you not running from God? When the Holy Spirit convicts you or convicts our heart towards an action and we walk out of the worship always only to forget about it, is that not running from God? When the Lord speaks into your heart to do something and when you come into the church, and by the time you reach your home, you forget what the Lord has spoken to you to do. Is that not running from God? Conviction this morning is always painful because it means there must be a change in our lives. And when the Holy Spirit brings convictions in your life, it's painful for some people. So they run away from what the Holy Spirit is convicting them about. In Jonah's case, it meant Giving up a, a lifelong prejudice and hate for the people of Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to see Nineveh saved. He didn't want to see the people come to repentance. He wanted God to wipe them out. To experience the full judgment of God. It meant realizing that God cared for those people just like he did for the people of Israel. That's why when people hurt us and do things to us this morning, instead of talking them down, pray for them. Love them this morning. Appreciate them this morning. That's what a true child of God does. We don't talk down, pull down. We don't say one is better than the other. I hear me this morning. We are not to compare 
Because God created you just as much as he created me. God's love and Jonah hate created an inconsistency that could only be re resolved if Jonah was willing to change. And there are people in, the, in churches today that are not willing to change because of their hate and God's love, there's an inconsistency within their life. I will share with the Sunday school this morning, the Sunday school class, that we could perfect the giftings and do things in the churches and we could go about with all the giftings. But if you don't have the love of God in our hearts this morning, amen, the gifting is nothing could compare. There are people who have, the, they have great giftings, but there's no love in their heart. Their people can preach the word of God and yet still live in hate. You could go to another church and say you belong somewhere else, but if there's no love inside of you, you're wasting time. Are you following me this morning? So God's love and Jonah hate create an inconsistency. That's why many of God's people in a place where there's inconsistency in their life. Because of the inconsistency, they, they are not found in the presence of God. And be in a secure place that God has positioned them. I hear me somebody. And so there was an inconsistency in the heart of Jonah. But remember this morning, change is hard and painful. How many can reckon that this morning? Change is hard and painful. That's why most people don't like change. We find most Christians are just like Jonah. Because why is that, Pastor? It's because it's much easier to run from the strong conviction of the Holy Spirit than it is to allow him to change us for the better. And if people would submit to the Holy Spirit, how many know God can work in their life for the better? But they feel running away is the better thing. And if this pattern of running is established with your person, new in your faith is a pattern that tends to take hold and not want to let go of their life. How many follow me this morning? But certainly this truth applies whether it be a Christian or whether it be a non-Christian this morning. The person who is running from God is the person who has heard from God. So if you see people that are running from God, it's because they have heard from God. The second thing that we learn from God in this passage of scripture, you would see when a person runs from God, he believed that he can escape from God. If he's running, he believed that he can escape. From God. The word of the Lord has come. Jonah had no doubt as what the word God wanted it for him. He knew that God wanted to send him to Nineveh. But if you notice verse 3. This word begins with a conjunction of the contrast but. B-U-T but. And sometimes God cannot work in our lives because our butt is in the way. And sometimes for God to work, we have to move our butt out of the way. Because sometimes our biggest problem is our butt. Are you following me this morning? God says to go to Nineveh. What did God say? Help me, church. Go to Nineveh. But Jonah decided he would do something else. How many times it is possible to look into the face of lost people and see potential leaders for the cause of Christ? Christ said, go for me. But they ran away from God and his ways. Such a man came to 
to Jesus. How many remember the rich young ruler? He came to Jesus. And he came, came saying, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to this young rich ruler, keep my commandments or keep the commandments. And he says, this young rich ruler, having a conversation with Jesus, he says, I have done that. Then Jesus said, this one thing you lack, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. I remember that conversation. The Bible then said, he went away sad because he had great wealth. In other words, he was close, but he was almost saved. But committed, but going to, but God has a plan for your life, but, but. And I want you today, it's a day that is coming that you will have to give a con for your butt. I follow because many times God wants to do things and we put a butt in it. God, but, but, but God, I have too much on my plate. When God spoke to, 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 to Moses to go to speak to Pharaoh, God, but I'm a man of stammering lips. You think when God called you, he didn't know all the buts? You think when God called, he didn't know, amen, all the weaknesses? All the, the mindsets and the philosophies that, that you have, that hold on, that make up, make you up. But when you come to God, you have to give over everything. And submit totally to God. Let God refine you. Let God make you over this morning. When I came to God, I have all these plans for my life. All these plans. But I'd hear, God have your way. God have your way. Because I understand that his way is above my way. It makes no difference what follows that conjunction, but. The word but alone in response to God's will for our lives make a spirit that is contrary to allowing God to take control of us. I have spoken to many people, one to one, and they always use the term or the conjunction, but. There's a real, a real defined Word for excuses. How many times we have used that conjunction to, when God has a calling upon our lives? The sad thing about, and if you would term it, the Billy Goat patience. How you know what's a Billy Goat? The Billy Goat types Christian are those who are always butting. Is that God's plan for us? What will make us surely happen? Someday the tables may be turned on us. And God will say to each person, Here is what I had planned for your life. But here, He will use a conjunction. This is what I planned for your life. But because of your butt, you cannot enjoy that. When I was meditating upon this word yesterday, I just sat down and away from my, from my desk and just writing. And God was just showing some thoughts into my spirit. That the secure places to be, it is in his will. 
And many times we forfeit the miracles and the blessings that, come, that is coming to our life is because we leave the safe harbor. Leave the will of God to do what we want because we tend to feel that it is godly. It sounds godly. It may even look godly, but it is not the will of God. I want you to think about it because if he was running from God, you can run from God in the same place that you are. You don't have to take a boat and go somewhere else. You just don't do what God tells you to do. That's running from God also. But what did the Bible says? That Jonah went and take a ship that is going to Tarshish. You see, because why he wanted peace, the conviction. Because you know he's supposed to take a ship going to Nineveh. But he take a ship going to Tarshish. How we try to, to appeal our self-righteousness. By bringing up things that seems godly. Think godly. Feels godly. But it is not. Am I hearing, hearing somebody this morning? If we could remove this conjunction of contrast from our lives. We would see the will of God being carried out like never before. So I want everybody to say it's time to move the butt. It's time. Notice again in, in verse 3 it says, but Jonah. No one made a decision for him. Jonah alone was responsible. Let me show you a disclaimer this morning. If you don't stand up for what God has said, if you don't live your life, then other people try to live your life for you. There are people who will try to live your life and make decisions for your life. See, because there are people in this world are not going anywhere. They're not making progress. And so they at a place where they're stuck and they want as much people to join them. But you see, when you're in an environment where in the will of God, you will find words that will encourage you to fulfill your purpose and your assignment. I mean, hear me this morning. And I'm here this morning to help you to come to that greater place of maturity in your life. The Lord says in the book of Galatians that if we remain a child, we are just as a slave. We have an inheritance positionally, we'll never be able to access it if we remain a child. Paul writing tells us that God says that we need guardians, we need managers for a specific set time over your life so you come to that place of greater maturity. When I read that, I want you to know that there's a lot of people, a lot of believers are still childish. See, let me say this to you. We have many teachers, but we don't have enough fathers. And God says to you, because I'm sharing this to you this morning, it is extremely important. That when God assigns you to a particular place, how many know that we are many members, but it's one body? Christ is the head of that body. And I want you to picture it, visualize it with me. Use the imagination. Picture the body. Think about which part of the body you are. And if you are nose, where would you put the nose on the body? On the face. If you are hand, what would be on your hand? Fingers. So picture you are finger and taking your finger and put it in the foot. How does that make for a body? Why would you take the airs and put it on the belly? Follow me. Many members, one body. 
And every, every member is a sign and is important to the body of Christ. So therefore, God will set you in a position that you are created for. If you're not an eye and your nose function as a nose and don't try to be the eye, let the eye be the eye and you be the nose because you're created for that specific purpose. So he said, Paul says, that if you remain a child, then those who are childish, they will find that they will cause strife, they will call bickering. They will call, cause all type of thing. They'll be jealous. They'll be complainers and whiners when you are a child. When you are infant. These are the, these are the specks or, or the, um, the fruit manifesting from a person, a child of God. A born again believers. A son of the kingdom. But they are infants. And they need a spiritual father. That's why God has placed a pastor in each church. That that pastor becomes the spiritual father over that church. To see that these individuals that he have placed within this local body and in this part of the body grow and come to the place of maturity so they can function. Are you following me this morning? So not every pastor is your father. There's a sign covering that God has placed. Why did I divert there? Because why? Because when you have a spiritual father over your life, he will instruct you and he will direct you so you don't make the mistakes this morning. That when he preached the word or teach the word or give godly counsel, that you will hear because God is the one that have assigned him over your life. Hello, somebody. If you choose to reject God's will for your life, you alone are responsible for that decision. If you reject God's will for the church, we can't go blaming anybody else. We are responsible for our own decisions. Are you following me this morning? Notice that everything that Jonah did was the opposite of doing God's will. All the versions that I check, but the NIV record that Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish. God's will is never accomplished but first rising up. When the word of the Lord comes to you, you must first bow down. Jesus bowed in Gethsemane and says, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away. But I want you to, not my will, but let your will be done. He was in a bow position this morning. He could have risen up. But he bowed. If you heard God speak to your life, you may be like Jonah. You may have risen up and walked away. You like Jonah may think you can escape from God. But the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 to 11. That one day everyone will acknowledge God's presence. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, don't rise up to flee from God. Bow down and accept him as Lord and Savior over your life. We all have places where we think that we can escape from God. We have our own personal tasks. Jonah boarded a boat to go to Tashus because he believed by going to Tashus he can hide from God. And I'm here to say to you this morning that every person here today has their personal Tashus of their own. 
It's a place that you feel that you can go and you can hide from God. A place where we can go when God is calling to escape from his voice. That's why when I drifted and I was in the club, it had plenty of people around me. There was music loud. But even when there's a vast majority of voices, how many know that God's voice is distinct about every other voice? Hallelujah, somebody. Where do you go to escape the Lord's presence? It doesn't have to be a bar. It doesn't have to be a strip joint. It could be a golf course. It could be a tennis court. It could be enjoying a good book or, 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 or going shopping for different people. As I said, different strokes for different folks. Because when you are running from God or when you're discouraged this morning, what do you go to? What is the thing that you do or where do you go to? Some people go and eat when they're discouraged. Some people go, amen, and shop and spend money that they don't have. I'm talking the truth this morning. Not that there's anything wrong with these things in and of themselves. But many times we are busy ourselves doing simply things simply to get away from doing what the Lord wants us to do. You ask somebody to do something. I'm busy. At all time. So these individuals. They are on a rocking chair.
Hallelujah. So when Jonah entered the ship, he had it appear fear. Satan doesn't like us to notice things like that. He tried to blind our eyes from that. You really can't choose to run from God like Jonah, but be aware it will cost you. Those who travel on Satan road must be Satan tolls. Don't feel that you're going to ride on Satan road and don't pay the tolls when they come. You feel it's all about you. Now you will have to pay Satan tolls. Jonah had to pay a lot more than this a measly fear to ride on that boat going to Tashus. He had to pay with a guilty conscience. He had to pay with a loss of self-respect. He had to pay by having no more direction in his life this morning. Are you following? He had to pay with a constant realization that he was on the run from a God who is at all places at all times. When you're running from God, you are heading for stormy waters with no anchor to hold you down. Are you following me this morning? The winds and storms of life will toss you in every direction. Life will always get the best of you instead of you getting the best of life. And that is when you're running from God. Life will get the best of you. You realize that you're not getting the best. There are people who want the best and they're not getting the best. Why? Because life getting the best of you and you're not getting the best of life. Jonah paid dearly for the efforts to run from God. And it was a miserable experience for him from start to finish. And that is just putting it mildly. He could never be satisfied until he came back to God. What it is that you're running from. What it is like to run from God. It is like this this morning. A hurried and frustrated individual, as I said, once frustrated, running, go anywhere, but it doesn't matter where he go, he will still find himself. How ridiculous that would be, like this man who went to the travel agent to get a ticket to go to some part of the world trying to run from himself. Yet it is just that ridiculous to try to run from God. Because everywhere you go, God is there. What are you running from? What are you running to this morning? Jonah had to pay a costly price. He had to pay Satan tolls. Running from God. Pay his way to Tarshish. The enemy will make you not see that. And think, well, you could go back and do what you want. But I want you to know, you're going to come to the toll booth and you will have to pay. You will have to pay one day. Sometimes you just, you know, sometimes you feel you don't have to pay no tolls and you're just driving. And it's a long distance and then boom. The toll booth is away ahead of you, waiting. Satan toll booth is waiting for you. To pay the tolls when you're running away from God. I say to you. You can run. But you can't hide. If you're going to run. Run to God. God. Plans. Never change. For Jonah. I could go in more to the story, but I just want to talk to you about the running aspect. And the cost that he paid, it was high cost. If we continue to read, you would see that a storm came. And that storm came not because there was a storm, because those guys were seasoned sailors. And they would study the sea, they would study the atmosphere, the climate, to determine if a storm is coming. But they choose to sail on a day where they know there was no storm. And I want you to know God will create a storm 
just for you because you're running away from him. And sometimes when the storm comes, it's not the devil. Sometimes the hardship that you experience is not the devil. Some of the things that you find the experience in your life, in your home, and your family, it's not the devil. God will create a storm so that you can get back to the place that he wants you. Are you following me? Would you stand to your feet this morning? You're here this morning. I want you to bow your hats this morning. God loves you this morning, and I'm here to tell you, don't run from God. Don't run away from God. Don't run away from His, run away from His purpose for your life. God has chosen you. You are special. You're unique this morning. God has placed you in a church to grow and to become all that He wants you to be. Don't get discouraged where you are. God will never leave you this morning. Could you imagine that Jonah run from God? But it is still God's will that he create a storm. And not only that, he sent whether a big fish or whale or whatever to swallow Jonah. So even his running, God still has a plan to bring you back so that you fulfill your purpose. Some of you are a place in your life, you wonder, am I fulfilling my purpose? You're questioning what you're doing. Am I making a difference? David was doing what his father wanted him to do. Nobody was paying attention. He was in the backside of a desert, taking care of the few father's sheep. Nobody paid attention to him. Even when Jesse came to David's house and tell his father, Jesse, to call all the sons that he, Samuel is going to anoint, want to be amen, the king over Israel. They didn't pay attention to David. David was like the black sheep. Because he was one of the sons that was not included. Because when they look at him, they didn't see anything kingly about him. But I want you to know, David was as faithful in the backside of the desert. And when nobody was watching him, David was doing everything faithfully. But God was taking notice of David. So if you are here in a place and because of that, you think that nobody is paying attention. I want you to know God is paying attention. He's paying attention this morning. He's looking at you. I preached a sermon some time ago. Amen. You will reap in your new season. If you faint not, you're going to reap this morning. So don't, don't pick up yourself and run away from him. Run to him to your father with open hands let's just worship the lord this morning before we pray draw me close to you If you worship him this morning, lift your hands and say, You were my desire. Is he your desire this morning? Oh, yes, Lord. No one else will do. No one else will do. Not together. Because nothing else can take your place.
get away and how many of your times do you feel like you just want to run you just want to just give up everything I have reached times in my life that I felt like that you know you can run away and stay right in your home and run away it's just a time that you feel that like you just want to be all alone I know what is feel within inside to want to run. And like John the prophet, I can see as a pastor, sometimes I feel that that is what I want to do. But I take counsel from God's word that when he speaks into your life is because he believes in you because if he didn't believe in you that he would not commission you to do what he would want you to do I said this morning you have been running uh, running away from him but this morning make a u-turn and run back to him this morning and say father I'm running back to you this morning so I want you as you hold those emblems in your hand this morning before we partake and pray this morning I want you to know every child of God every person here this morning no matter what you're feeling within inside of you this morning whatever emotional aspect that you you are experiencing this morning I want you to know God loves you this morning he cares about you he has ordained your life this morning he has set you in a path this morning and the safest place to be is in his will. So Father, right now with every head bow and every eye closed. Father, you know what we are going through, what we are faced with this morning. Like Jonah this morning, he didn't want to see Nineveh saved. He wanted them as an evil people to perish. But because of you, Lord, God of mercy this morning, because some of us could have been living in Nineveh, oh God. And if, if Jonah would have his way, then we would have been perishing. We'd have been destroyed. But thank you, God. Oh God, for mercy. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, oh God. That you wish that none shall perish, but all come to repentance. That God, if it wasn't for your love this morning, God. 
oh God, Nineveh would have been wiped out, oh God, and some of us, oh Lord, who have spent our life in Nineveh would have been destroyed. But oh God, we thank you for your love and kindness this morning. That oh God, that Jonah preached in Nineveh, and God, they repented this morning. And God, I found out that they come to you, and God, it's going to be confess our sins. God, you are faithful and you are just to forgive all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. David says, God, if you wash me with hyssop, I shall be clean, oh God. God, you said in your word, David says, Lord, oh God, I was born in sin and shaped me in iniquity. And so, God of mercy, this morning, I pray, God, that you wash us, oh God. I pray wash us with the blood of Jesus. Oh God, remove every stain and guilt this morning. God, remove every evil thought, every evil way, God. Oh God, wash us and purify our minds and our hearts today. Oh God, forgive us this morning. Oh God, I know there is a fountain filled. Oh God, Father, with blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. That if we, oh God, plunge beneath that flood, God, you will lose. We will lose all our guilty stain. This morning, forgive us this morning. Wash us clean. Take all our sins and, oh God, throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember anymore. God, like Jonah, we repent this morning. We may be going down like Jonah was thrown into the sea. Oh God, swallowed by a fish and went to the bottom of the sea. God, our path of running for you might take us down, oh God, to the deepest abyss, Lord. But even down to the deepest abyss, oh God, you are God of mercy. That when Jonah cried out at the bottom of the sea in the whale's belly, God, you heard his cry. God, no matter what place we may be or find ourselves, oh God, if we cry out this morning, you Almighty God will hear our cry. And so I pray this morning, hear our cry, oh God. Hear our cry for mercy. Hear our cry for forgiveness, oh God. Hear our cry this morning to restore us, oh God. Have mercy, oh God. Blood of my transgression. Find my iniquity, oh God. Wash me with your blood this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. You're all. I have needed. Oh, you're all that I want, God. You're all, you're all that I want. Help me know, help me know, Jesus. Help me know you. He's there this morning. Help me, Lord. Help me know you. I would say thank you, Jesus, this morning. I want you to confess I am forgiven. I am washed in the blood. I am a child of God. I'm on my way to fulfilling my purpose. I am ever grateful for the love of God demonstrated for me in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in the same night, before he break bread, he give thanks unto the Lord and said, Take ye this body which is broken for me. He says, This bread that you want your hands, give thanks and he break it. And he said, This is my body which is broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is new covenant in my blood. That as often as you eat of the bread and you drink of the cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. In other words, this is a memorial that we are holding in our hand to remind us 
that God is a God of mercy that God is a God who forgives as David says in Psalm 103 as far as the east is from the west so far he has removed our transgression from us today how many grateful this morning for what Christ has done on Calvary's cross he says that we must take notice of this that if we eat the bread and we drink of the cup unworthily we bring damnation upon ourselves that's why many are sick and many are sleeping before that means many die he says before you partake if there is something against your brother or sister leave the cup leave the emblems and go to them and make it right for obedience is better than sacrifice then only then come and take your emblem and partake this morning i trust that that we all right with each other i trust that you make it right if there is something that is not right and we exercise the word of the lord this morning we are called to be one in christ amen this morning as we hold the emblems father thank you for the bread and the wine thank you for this memorial that we hold in our hands that we will never forget what christ has done on calvary's cross that he paid for god for a ransom with his blood god he bled and died on calvary that we oh god who come now and have faith and believe and accept him into our heart to them it be give power to become the sons and daughters of the most high thank you today that we stand as sons and daughters in your presence god as we partake of holy communion today god which is the one of the pillars oh god father i pray god we do it oh god father oh god do it worthily i pray god that the benefits of holy communion will be bestowed upon every life here today in the name of jesus bless the bread bless the cup in jesus name and let god's people say Amen. I mean, you may partake of the bread this morning. You finished? I want you to exchange a glass with somebody. The Bible says in 1 John 3.16, Hereby we perceive the love of God because Christ laid down his life for us. We, in turn, should lay down our life for our brother. The exchange of glass this morning is declaring that I am your, my brother's keeper. And with that this morning, let's partake of the cup this morning. Hallelujah. Before you leave this morning, I want you to stretch your hands up. One hand, I know you may be holding a glass. And I want somebody to say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Lord. We are grateful this morning. Father, today, I thank you for this word. I thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. God, thank you, oh God, that we are reminded that no matter where we go, God, where we run to you, you're always there. God, I thank you, oh God, that your love knows no boundary. That you love even the unlovable. Such we were, that we were always sinners, but Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Thank you for loving us, oh God, unconditionally, and for saving us today. Thank you for Kingdom Life Ministry and for everything that has been done here to glorify you. Thank you for the leadership. Thank you for the staff members. Thank you for all the workers that work behind the scene to make this ministry and for what you're doing here possible. God, as your people have come from near and far, even though, oh God, we have heard, oh God, the, red, the weather report, oh God, you heard what the meteorologist said. Many have pressed their way to be here. I pray, God, that your hands will be upon them. God, even as we go, and it may be, we don't know, I don't know the condition of the outside, Whatever condition it may be, God, do you take each person and every person, oh God, home safely. I pray this morning a special blessings upon each person's life. 
upon their homes today, God. And God, even through, oh God, the climaxing of the days and weeks that are ahead, the coming to a close of another era, that God, they will not wait for New Year's Eve to make decisions concerning our life. That God, we all will consider our life, oh God, and make decisions to run to you, almighty God, then away from you. Bless us all, oh God. Bind us with cords of love that cannot be broken, oh God. I pray, oh God, that if you tarry and we see tomorrow, we already know that you are in our tomorrow and you're working all things out for the good to them that love you and call according to your purpose today. Bless us all, I pray. Bless those who are watching by the internet, I pray. In Jesus' name.